Cześć, dzień dobry, wita się z Wami wszystkimi Wasz brytyjski korespondent. A w dzisiejszym odcinku ja tylko szybko zrobię wstęp, ponieważ przygotowałem dla Was wywiad z Karol, czyli można powiedzieć przewodniczącą całego strajku protestu, który odbywa się tutaj pod bazą wojskową w Scampton. A dotyczy on sytuacji nielegalnych imigrantów i otwarcia tutaj, właśnie w tym miejscu, dla nich ośrodka, w którym będą czekali na rozpatrzenie swoich wniosków o azyl. Zaraz za mną, tam gdzie jest ta brama, jest szkoła podstawowa. Tutaj w tle za mną jest mała wioska z Campton, licząca niespełna 700 mieszkańców. Tu zaś z prawej strony już za płotem jest baza wojskowa, którą to planuje się właśnie przekształcić w taki ośrodek dla imigrantów. Myślę, że nie bez powodu Karol, jak również inni mieszkańcy tego miasta obawiają się nieco tego, że w tak bliskim sąsiedztwie od bazy znajduje się szkoła podstawowa i po prostu nie wiedzą jak to wszystko będzie, jeżeli te plany pójdą naprzód i zostanie tu zwiezionych. No, na początku był plan 2000, teraz podobno jest informacja z home office, że będzie to tylko 800 osób, ale nadal więcej niż nawet w tej wiosce mieszka ludzi. Oglądajcie wywiad z Karol, ponieważ dzisiaj to ona jest głównym bohaterem tego odcinka. Także zapraszam do oglądania, wbijcie pod spodem komentarz. Wywiad jest po angielsku, ale macie przygotowane napisy tak, żeby każdy mógł to obejrzeć i zrozumieć. Jeszcze tylko szybciutko wytłumaczę, że jest to drugi odcinek z serii na temat tego, czy możemy w Anglii czuć się bezpiecznie. Jeżeli nie widziałeś pierwszego odcinka, to tutaj go gdzieś podlinkujemy. Zobacz go również, ponieważ będziesz wtedy wiedział więcej na temat tego wszystkiego, co tutaj się dzieje. W tamtym odcinku nagrałem również kilka innych ważnych, takich powiedzmy backgroundowych informacji na temat tego, żeby ten temat lepiej zrozumieć, więc na pewno będzie to dobrą opcją, żebyś obejrzał obydwa te filmy. A teraz zapraszam już do wywiadu. Ok, so... I'm here today at Scampton to see what's going on and to understand uh, why you're here. Uh, so if you can maybe introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about it. I'm Carol. I live in Lincoln and um, I think I've been here 14 months now. So ever since the it was announced that the base, the Heritage Center was not going ahead. Okay. Um, because just to backtrack, we were promised a 300 million pound investment here. Okay, to have or like a, a heritage center. World class heritage center. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just the heritage center, there was going to be a training center, I believe, for engineering. Okay. Um, I think possibly a hotel and maybe talk of an international runway mm -hmm. in time. So, but the big thing was a thousand jobs for the area. And everybody was thrilled about that. The history of this base um, and then in March 23 um, I think it was within a couple of couple of weeks of when the work was starting uh, the Home Office decided that they were going to use this site as a, um, a processing center for the illegal migrants that are coming over so um, yeah I was pretty upset about that and so were a lot of other people and the, the camp here is all local people. So how this uh, all this comes? Because there are camps all over the place, yeah? Yeah. At literally every gate. Yeah. So how this all, you know, come to life? You know, how you guys gathered yourself and, and yeah. made this happen? Um, well, I've been up and down this lay-by for the last 14 months at different places. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be down at uh, main camps, but then a, a group from out of the area came in and took it over and so we sort of moved up here so yeah we're all local mm -hmm. um, I so mean, what are you fighting for we want the heritage center to be built you want to uh, stop the migrants from I, coming yes, here yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. in your opinion what are the, the the biggest issues if this goes ahead and this migrant center is done here well the this area doesn't have the um I, d I don't think this area could cope with 2,000 um, migrants anyway. Mm -hmm. The little base here, is, is, I think it's 690 people yeah. live there. And um, yeah, it's it's they're just going to swamp the area. 
it's it's little things though like what what they get what their entitlement is mm -hmm. like free buses to Lincoln every half hour yet the residents on the base it's every two two hours they have to wait for transport into the city why I'm here I well I live in Lincoln so I'm pretty local anyway but I've always admired this base mm -hmm. the the history of the dam busters um, so yeah the base has been here since 1916 and it was a it was an air station in World War One. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was uh, it was operational from then, and then 1918 was when the RAF actually became uh, the organisation, and and then it became RAF Scampton. From then it was called Rattleby in the early and days. And the Red Hours, Red Arrows, Red Arrows were, were, absolutely. were here all yeah. this time. Yeah, the, well, not all of the time. They came here, um, I think, in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, um, but since then, yeah. they oh, were yes. all the way up oh, to the yes. place was closed. That's, that's a hangar there that you can see through the trees is the Red Arrows hangar. I see. But we've all, also had the um, Falcon here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And 617 Squadron, the Dam Busters, um, after the uh, Dam Busters raid, I'm supposed to be looking at that, by the way. It's okay, it is okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> After the Dam Busters raid, they, they were involved in more assignments, the more dam busting, but they weren't as so successful as the Dam Busters and, and the Turpits. And then I believe they were in Malaya for four months on assignments. And then they came back here in 1956, I think it was, to uh, to be involved with the Vulcan. The, um, yeah, so... So Six all this history, seven. all this heritage that is here, basically what you are fighting for yes. is to to have it yes. and not to lose it, not to lose and not it. to convert it to the place that yeah. in European shouldn't be here. Yeah, I mean, most of the buildings here are listed, the officers mess is listed, four of the hangars are the old sea type from 1936-7, so you know that's that's all history. There's a Roman villa under the runway that yes. not a lot of people know about. Um, it's it's just the history though. Um, so the what heritage. do you think um, should be a plan to deal with migrants? Well, do, do you think the Rwanda bill is a good uh, idea? What's your opinion uh, on that? Well, it hasn't really worked. It's, there's been a lot of talk about it for years, and nothing has actually worked. Well, if if it would work, would it be a good idea? Uh, I don't really know. I, I don't mind um, migrants coming in if they come in legally mm -hmm. through the process. But, um, but these people, you are just worried because they don't have IDs. We don't they, know they, who they are. We don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't come with families. Um, so I can't see how they would be coming from war torn countries. In fact, a lot of them are, are going to Italy, France, and then over to to England, well, neither Italy or France are well to well, countries. So I, I can see you got nothing against migrants because yeah. I'm a migrant and you welcomed me here yeah, so yeah, much, you know, yeah. that I, I feel really good here. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to show to people who watch my channel yeah. what is really going on. You know? Yeah. Because I've, I've heard about this really bad news about uh, what happened in our area in Lincolnshire yeah. just recently. This guy is now trialed. Um, and I thought, well, the things like this happening all around yeah. if this place here is going ahead then yeah. it's just right uh, around the corner so yeah. that's why i'm here i mean in, in skegness all all of the hotels except one were taken over by the home office for illegal migrants and there's, there's been two rapes there that i'm aware of and i believe they've been convicted and there was another rape um i think it was in lincoln that person was acquitted but um rapes we we won't accept things like this it's of course. there's the little school there as well um uh, scampton yes mm -hmm. um which is just behind that little green fence that you can see it i see um but that's a worry to me but um overall i'm here to fight for the space because i'm passionate about it i know quite a lot about the dam busters and i respect and honor them not just the British RAF, but the <coughs> Australians, the Canadians, the New Zealand, all of our allies all put their lives on the line to go out for our freedom and democracy. Um, and 
this is just one of the places that holds this history for yes. us. Yes, yeah. And 107 years this place has been here and I'm not going to let it go without a fight. I see. And uh, just lastly, do you have any idea in mind what would be a good solution for all this situation with migrants to stop from, you know, for them to stop them from coming? Um, well, I don't know why the governments are allowing them in, quite honestly. Um, so do you think they should like put maybe more um, guards and uh, border force patrols over uh, the yeah, channel? I mean, they're, they're coming into our waters illegally. Um, and sadly, the RNLI are bringing them in. And the RNLI are supposed to be rescuing people from sea, um, which I know they're doing that in a way, but they are actually bringing them in. And they're not being challenged, they're just being allowed in. They have no ID. I certainly wouldn't be able to go to another country without my passport or paperwork. So, um, yeah, it's just... The biggest worry for you is that we don't know who they are. Yes, is that right? absolutely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And because I know of attacks that have gone on and rapes. And, um, yeah, the, I don't believe the government... Well, I don't. They, we don't know who these people are. But there's been no sort of assessment here either. You know, assessment of the buildings. And a lot of these buildings, as I said, are listed. So they're precious. They need to be kept in the, in the way they, that they were. And how long you've been here fighting for this? 14 months? 14 months. 14 months. Every yeah. day? Virtually every day. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, even Christmas Day. <laughs> That's a lot say. of effort. Yeah. yeah. But I'm and passionate dedication. about the base. Yeah. And I want all of those lads who flew out that night, we lost 53. I want them to be honoured. And I would personally love to see a statue of uh, Guy Gibson here, the wing commander who led them all out. And really, you know, some, some sort of monument dedicated to them. Well, I believe that's all what uh, patriotism is about. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I am a British patriot. I have been accused by some news channels of being racist because I'm proud to fly the flag and obviously proud of 617 Squadron. But uh, I'm not a racist at all. Well, I don't feel that I met any racist people here today. Right, that's so good. So I think that's the best conclusion. Yes. <laughs> and thank yes. you very much thank for you. taking time thank to talk to me. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. No i tym sposobem doszliśmy do końca wywiadu. I kończy się również moja wycieczka i wizyta w wiosce Scampton oraz bazie wojskowej, która jest przekształcana w ośrodek dla nielegalnych imigrantów. Daj znać pod spodem w komentarzu, co myślisz o całym temacie. Jeżeli ten content Ci się spodobał, to wbij proszę lajka i zostaw subskrypcję, jeżeli chcesz wspierać ten kanał oraz materiały, które się na nim pojawiają. Z polsko-brytyjskim pozdrowieniem. Do zobaczenia. Cześć!